Hey guys, welcome to another episode of TFB TV. Today we are in Erbil in Kurdistan slash Iraq. And big, th big shout out, big thanks to one, Venturi Munitions for supporting our channel, and two, Vlad, who does a lot of stuff with Kalashnikov Concern, and he does a lot of really cool stuff on the internet. Thank you so much for pointing out this shop. Today, we are outside the city center in Erbil, just outside the Citadel, and this shop's pretty famous. Tons of people have covered it, uh, the BBC, CNN, a bunch of people have made videos about it. Really cool place, and this is all thanks to the fellow right over here, Named Ustad Bakhtiar, he's a little bit busy talking to some customers at the moment. But he's a cool guy, fixes Peshmerga guns, so at, sort of at the height of ISIS, a lot of people started bringing their stuff over here, and he would fix Peshmerga small arms and then work on them, and then send them back out to people. In addition to just working with local civilians, and people bring stuff in here, everything from air guns, shotguns, all the junk Turkish stuff, some of it's not junk, but then all the really cool stuff that I think is really fascinating, the historical stuff. So I just want to meander around the shop here, and then have a few words with Bakhtiar as well. But as we go on here, let's take a look, right? All right, come over here to the wall. What are we looking at? An Enfield, a Spanish Mauser, two Persian Mausers, which these are really cool because you can see the Shah's mark, and then you got the numbers there on Farsi and then the side with the Nastalik, which I thought is really neat with the Persian stuff. And then, moving on, what do we got here? A Lee Enfield, an SMLE, an SKS, some other stuff, some Italian stuff, but then it gets interesting when we look down here. Look at this, Bulgarian MGM-1. These were a lot of USAID programs bought, brought these in to the Kurds and a lot of other forces in Syria, different other SDF, a lot of different forces. We see these all over Syria through covert aid to a lot of these forces. But this is one of them, it's broken, it's Dunzo. And you can always tell because the Bulgarian PKMs have this sort of ribbed barrel on the outside for the heating fins, right? Now, if we, as we move on, check this out, Pakistani MG-3s. We can tell because on the receiver, MG3 PLF for Pakistani Ordnance Factory, right? And then, a 1919, these are neat. A lot of these, you see them all throughout the Middle East. A lot of surplus post Second World War. You even see a lot of 762 variants that came actually through Israel because Israel bought a bunch of them after the war in their fight for independence. But then over here, this is super rare, an Egyptian RPD. There's actually two of these in this shop. There's one over here and then there's one right here. They've got markings on them in Arabic and you can, they were made at the Al Mahdi factory in Egypt. And you can tell this one is 1979 and then this one is 1979 as well. So from the same year. But right next to them is a Chinese RPD. Big difference you can tell by looking at the, uh, the gas chambers, at the gas tubes. The Chinese has a full length one right there and then the Egyptian has a shorter one. Different kinds of launchers, expended stuff. None of this is live, it's not too interesting. But then on the wall over here, I always thought this was kind of neat, the Egyptian Port Said. That you don't see too much in the States at all. And it's pretty cool because it's the Egyptian version of the Smith & Wesson M76 or the Swedish K, whichever way you want to go off of it. All this stuff, Turkish shotguns galore, air guns galore, a lot of stuff going on here. And this is the man and the legend himself, Ostari Bakhtiar. Assalamu alaikum. Cool. Bakhtar, thank you so much. Shokran, spas, spas. Spas. So, I wish I could have a more, we probably will have a more in-depth interview with Ostari Bakhtiar in the future if we can sit down with an interpreter and then have some good times uh, talking about these old guns. He's been doing this since he was a kid and this is actually a picture of him as a kid right over there. He started this from his father um, in several decades ago as well. Alright guys, so here we are back behind the shop. We've got some neat pistols here. First of all, a chrome Tarek. This one, Bakhtiar did himself, he chrome-plated it. But moving on from this guy, we got fake Glocks, tons of fake Glocks in this region, a lot coming out from Turkey. And behind me, wow, where do we even begin? CZ up there, chopped barrel, different kinds of stuff, a lot of fake stuff, a lot of stuff from Turkey, but also a lot of real stuff as well. Some Walter copies, some Glock copies, some air guns up in top. Uh, this guy, this guy can be pretty rare, Chinese air gun, you don't see it too much in the States. And then Sterling, a fed, what's left of a federal launcher. A lot of these were surplus sold to Israel and then a lot of them came over to here. You see these in use by a lot of Israeli forces. PSH, that's been all sorts of conundrum. I don't even know what you want to call that. Continuing another Sterling, an Uberes of some sort, MP40. 
the stories this guy could tell, I wish I could know. Cool MP40, what's left of an AR-15 of some variety. Not sure what we got going on there. The CAA Rami, different stocks, um, a lot of different other stuff going on here. Oh yeah, and this guy as well, a little Obra's version of an AK cut down and everything. But anyways, that's what we got for the pistols.